Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer, where I will answer one of your questions. And this question is from Nathaniel uh, Peter Patterson, sorry, Patterson. And he asks, do you think it is a good idea to learn how to use Wireshark to help analyze a network problem, whether it is bandwidth issues or dropped packets? This is a great question. It is an easy question to answer and it's going to be a very short episode. So let's go ahead and talk about that now. <laughs> OK, um, this is the biggest um, yes I can ever give. But yes, learning how to do a packet capture and learning about, let's say, wire Wireshark is extremely important as a network engineer. OK, now here's the truth behind that, though. As network engineers, we hate doing packet captures because it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. So doing setting up to okay, so for people who don't know really what this means, you you're hearing the word Wireshark and analyze network problems. Like, what does that mean exactly? So um, Wireshark is a particular program that you can install on your Mac or on a Windows computer, typically like a laptop. And you can get your laptop and you can plug it into the network, like to a switch port, actually. OK, then you configure like a port monitor or span on that switch. So you may say, I want to know what is going on um, basically through the firewall. OK, people are saying that they're getting connection drops. I'm not seeing anything on the firewall. So what you can do is you can say, I want to monitor and capture all packets on the port that connects to the firewall. And all those packets, I want to send that directly to my laptop. OK, and then from there, I can look at it and go through proper analysis. And we call that a packet capture. And Wireshark is the program that you can use that can interpret all the particular sessions and flows that has been captured on the network based on the ports that you want to monitor. Now, the data that is captured is going to be a lot of information, like every every type of conversation that's going on. So if you know about TCP, you know, TCP uh, starts out with what we call the three way handshake. Right. So basically, it starts out with a sin, a sin act, then an acknowledgement and then data is sent. OK, very basic stuff. You learn that in the CCNA class, right? So you get all that information. And this can be very tedious because when you look at the details of this, you're like, what is happening here? But what's really important is not just learning how to use Wireshark and things like that. You got to also have a basic understanding of networking, understanding things about um, frames and packets and what they look like and how to interpret all of that. That is so important. And luckily the CCNA does teach you that extremely well. I remember when, um, and this is a question that we used to give people when they were applying at the Department of, of Energy. It's a simple question. We tell people, for an ethernet frame, what is the makeup of an 802.3 uh, 802 frame compared to an um, an Ethernet two frame. And people kind of go, right? The difference is based on a particular field, which either is type or the length. Okay, it's basically right after the source and destination within the Ethernet frame. I'll put a picture up here so I'm not confusing some of you guys who are starting out in this field. Okay. The purpose of that question is that understanding the structure about what is a frame. You have an Ethernet frame, and within the payload, you of course have you know, the IP, um, the IP header. OK, the layer three header is also in there. You got the TCP header and you got the data. All that's kind of encapsulated. And understanding that will make interpreting Wireshark extremely important, because if not, you will be lost. Now, luckily, Wireshark has also other cool tools they can use for it can give you like analysis like, hey, this is the number of errors that we see. This is the number of conversations that we see. So it does give you some good assistance for some of that. I don't think it's very, I don't think it's very cleanly organized. I think it'd be much better. Um, you don't have to use Wireshark. There's other programs that you can use, uh, but Wireshark is the most common one. 
You talk to any network engineer, you say Wireshark, they're going to know what you're talking about. So to answer your question, Nathaniel, and anyone else out there, I know you got a lot of stuff to learn out there, whether you're CCNA or certifications and you're doing your labs, you're, you're doing your practical experience on the job, that sort of thing. Um, you're doing programming, you know, if you're doing that on the side. You learn about new products out there and new protocols and features, IOTs and things like that. Um, Wireshark is another component that is important. Now, again, it's not something that you do on a daily basis. OK, I had done uh, packet captures a couple of times in my career. It was not something that I need to do on a daily basis. OK, we use packet captures more if there's issues of a computer having problems trying to communicate with some application or server or a phone having problems. But we're not seeing anything on the switch or the router. There's no errors being reported. There's nothing in the logs on those devices. But there's a problem with the phone trying to communicate. OK, so the best way to troubleshoot that is to connect a network, um, pretty much a, a network sniffer, which is basically your laptop with Wireshark enabled and listening to traffic that you actually configure as a port monitor on the switch. And we are done with this episode. So if you have any questions about being a network engineer or anything in the networking field, Post those questions below in the comments and I will answer that in a future episode or speed round. So thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe to this channel and support us at rodhub.net. Until next time, keep networking.